2022, the 26th day of school. We are glad that you are here today and we hope that you left your average at home or on the bus and you are ready to have a respectful and responsible day. Ready means being in the right place at the right time with the right stuff. Responsible, I mean respectful means treating others the way you want to be treated. Irresponsible means doing your job with a smile on your face and giving perfect effort. Speaking of responsibility, our first responsibility is being ready to show our respect for the rights we have in this country and in this school. We do this by daily saying the Pledge of Allegiance, the school pledge, and doing the moment of silence. To show our respect, we say the pledge, we stop what we're doing, and stand up and put our hand over our heart, like this, and say the pledge rightly, clearly, and with pride. Would you please stand for the pledge and remain standing for the Kennedy School Pledge? I pledge, pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for, for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for the Kennedy School Pledge. I pledge myself as a Kennedy Dragon to be ready for the day ahead of me. I will be respectful of myself, my teachers, and all others I meet throughout the day. I promise to be responsible for myself, my actions, and my learning. I will work my hardest to be the best dragon I can be. Please take a moment to reflect silently on your day, your activities, and what you hope to accomplish. Hey, Ben, and my name is Caleb. Another responsibility that we have is to try to keep each other safe by slowing down the spread of germs. We do this by frequently washing our hands. When we wash our hands, we want to use soap and water or an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. We wash our hands, we want to get all parts of our hands. The palms of our hands, the backs of our hands, our fingertips, our fingers and our fingertips, plus our wrists and our thumbs. When we wash our hands, we want to do it for at least 20 seconds, so let's wash our hands. Spaghetti with meat sauce and garlic bread, garden salad, vegetable medley, fruit cocktail, and rice crispy treat. If you don't want spaghetti and meat sauce, you can always get PB Dare or Muffin and Yogurt. Here, Here to, to tell us about the weather, weather is Alina. Alina. I'm Alina and I will be bringing you today's weather report. The weather for today is predicted to be partly cloudy with about 20% chance of scattered showers, a high of 82 and a low of 67. Hope you have a great day. For the month of September, we are focusing on the character strong attribute of respect. We always say respect to means treating others the way you want to be treated. But it also means seeing the value of all people and things and treating them with care. As we focus this month on respect, we are going to share with you examples of, of being respectful by listening and being a friend, resolving conflict, seeing others' perspective, or being a leader. Like Peyton and Mayor 2 said, we are talking about respect this month, and respect means treating others the way you want to be treated. Or another definition that we learned is that it is um, finding value in all people and things and take and treating them with care. Uh, you can show uh, respect through listening. You can show respect by being a friend, by understanding how to uh, resolve conflicts between each other, by taking other people's perspectives by practicing conflict resolution and also by being a leader. Our fifth graders have been doing this um, this week as they practice being uh, leaders and showing respect by being a leader is by making respect agreements um, in their class. 
one of the things that they were doing is making sure that they understand what an ideal classroom would look like. And they have actions for that by s smiling and calling each other by name, by listening to other people's um, ideas. Um, and what they're going to be doing is working in groups and there'll be a leader in there and they're going to try to listen for everybody. There's going to be a leader that's going to lead those groups and they're going to make student to student uh, behaviors that show respect. We have to understand what respect is and come up with ideas of how to do that. And then when the day goes on, we got to remember them and try to put them in place. And that's a great way to show respect. Remember, respect can be uh, by listening, being a friend understanding how to solve conflicts, understanding other people's perspectives, uh, practicing conflict resolution, and also being a leader. Hayden, now it is time for our morning message. Please make sure you are being respectful listener to Adina and JC as they bring us the morning message. Attention, attention! There are opportunities on the loose. They're everywhere you look. There are opportunities all over the building, in the classroom, in the halls, they're even in the cafeteria. So listen up, some opportunities are really difficult to see. They're undercover disguised as problems and difficulties. Don't be fooled behind the disguise. If you look very carefully, there is often an opportunity. Maybe it's a chance to show kindness or a chance to ask for help. Today remember this, a problem is often an opportunity in disguise. With, With something, something to, to think, think about, about, this is Adina and JC. Make it a great, great day, day or not, the choice is yours. Yay! Finally! One announcement that we have for today. Please help Mr. Butcher, Mr. Nupit, and your teachers keep us safe, which is their job. By being a ready, respectful, and responsible student who is focused on graduating in the year. Because when you are ready, respectful, and responsible student who is focusing on graduating, you are boldly, boldly committed to student success. I'm Peyton. I'm married to have an awesome, awesome day. day. It's time for our read aloud of the day. I'm still trying to model what good readers do, read fluently, uh, which means at a good pace, not too fast, not too slow, and with expression. Also, too, this is also an opportunity for you guys to practice what good readers do, listening for the um, the characters, who or what the story's about, the setting, where it's taking place, the sequence of events, what happens first, next, and last, the plot, and the problem, the solution. Um, but also, too, since this is one of our books, we're doing Character Strong in our uh, attribute this month is respect all of our books kind of have something in there about respect and we know that respect means treating others the way you want to be treated and also too we know that uh, character strong defines it as uh, finding the value in all people and things and treating them with care um, one of the th ways that we can show respect is by resolving conflict so when you get in an argument with someone how you work that out that's showing respect when you can resolve conflicts so our book today should tie all those things in so our book today is called chrysanthemum and it's by kevin hanks i think it might be hankies uh, but kevin hanks is his name so i'm going to read this you guys listen see if you can find uh the characters like you do a normal reading but also too see if you can figure out how does this show respect chrysanthemum and here's our cover and now is our title page. The title page always shows where the publishing company and where it was published. Whoops, I think I skipped a page there. The day she was born was the happiest day in her parents' lives. She's perfect, said her mother. Absolutely, said her father. And she was. She was absolutely perfect. Her name must be Everything she is, said her mother. Her name must be absolutely perfect, said her father. And it was. Chrysanthemum. Her parents named her Chrysanthemum. Chrysanthemum grew and grew and grew. And when she was old enough to appreciate it, Chrysanthemum loved her name. She loved the way it sounded when her mother woke her up. She loved the way it sounded when her father called her for dinner, and she loved the way it sounded when she whispered it to herself in the bathroom mirror. Chrysanthemum, chrysanthemum, chrysanthemum. Chrysanthemum loved the way her name looked when it was written with ink on an envelope. She loved the way it looked when it was written with icing on her birthday cake, and she loved the way it looked when she wrote it herself 
with a fat orange crayon. Chrysanthemum, chrysanthemum, chrysanthemum. Chrysanthemum thought her name was absolutely perfect. And then she started school. On the first day, Chrysanthemum was her, wore her sunniest dress and her brightest smile. She ran all the way. Hooray, said Chrysanthemum. School! But when Mrs. Chud took roll call, everyone giggled upon hearing Chrysanthemum's name. It's too long, said Joe. It scarcely fits on your name tag, said Rita, pointing. I'm named after my grandmother, said Victoria. You're named after a flower. Chrysanthemum wilted. She did not think her name was absolutely perfect. She thought it was absolutely dreadful. The rest of the day was not much better. During nap time, Victoria raised her hand and informed Miss Chud that Chrysanthemum's name was spelled with 13 letters. That's exactly half as many letters as there are in the entire alphabet, Victoria exclaimed. Thank you for sharing that with us, Victoria, said Mrs. Chud. Now put your head down. If I had a name like yours, I'd change it, Victoria said, as the students lined up to go home. I wish I could, thought Chrysanthemum miserably. Welcome home, said her mother. Welcome home, said her father. School is no place for me, said Chrysanthemum. My name is too long. It scarcely fits on my name tag, and, and I'm named after a flower. Oh, push. Your name is beautiful, said her mother. And precious and priceless and fascinating and winsome, said her father. It's everything you are, her mother said. Absolutely perfect, said her dad. Chrysanthemum felt much better after her favorite dinner, macaroni and cheese with ketchup, ew, and an evening filled with hugs and kisses and parcheesi. That night, Chrysanthemum dreamed that her name was Jane. It was an extremely pleasant dream. The next morning, Chrysanthemum wore her most comfortable jumper, she walked to school as slowly as she could. She dragged her feet in the dirt. Chrysanthemum, 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 she wrote. She even looks like a flower, said Victoria, as chrysanthemum entered the playground. Let's pick her, said Rita, pointing. Let's smell her, said Joe. Chrysanthemum wilted. She did not think her name was absolutely perfect. She thought it was absolutely dreadful. The next, the rest of the day was not much better. During nap time, Victoria raised her hand and said, A chrysanthemum is a flower. It lives in a garden with worms and other dirty things. Thank you for sharing, said Victoria. Thank you for sharing with us, Victoria, said Miss Chud. Now, put your head down. I just can't believe your name, Victoria said, as the students lined up to go home. Neither can I, thought chrysanthemum. Welcome home, said her mother. Welcome home, said her father. School is no place for me, said Chrysanthemum. They said I even look like a flower. They pretended to pick me and smell me. Ah, oh, push, they're just jealous, said the mother. And envious and begrudging and discontented and jaundiced, said her father. Who, who would be jealous of a name like yours, said mother. After all, it's Perfectly, absolutely perfect, said her father. Chrysanthemum felt a trifle better about after her favorite dessert, chocolate cake with buttercream frosting, and another evening filled with hugs and kisses and parcheesi. That night, Chrysanthemum dreamed that she really was a chrysanthemum. She sprouted leaves and petals. Victoria picked her and plucked her, plucked the leaves and petals one by one until nothing was left but a scrawny stem. It was the worst nightmare Chrysanthemum had ever had. Chrysanthemum wore her outfit with seven pockets the next morning. She loaded the pockets with her most prized possessions and her good luck charms. Chrysanthemum took the longest possible route to school. She stopped and stared at each and every flower. Chrysanthemum, 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 the flower seemed to say. That morning, the students were introduced to Mrs. Twinkle, the music teacher. Her voice was like something out of a dream, as was everything about her. 
the students were speechless. They thought Miss Twinkle was an indescribable wonder. They went out of their way to make a nice impression. Miss Twinkle led the students in scales. Then she assigned roles for the class musical. Victoria was chosen as the dainty fairy queen. Rita was chosen as the spiffy butterfly princess. Joe was chosen as the all-important pixie messenger. And Chrysanthemum was chosen as a daisy. Chrysanthemum's a daisy! Chrysanthemum's a daisy! Joe, Rita, and Victoria chanted, thinking it was so funny. Chrysanthemum wilted. She did not think her name was absolutely perfect. She thought it was absolutely dreadful. What's so humorous, said Mrs. Twinkle. Chrysanthemum was the, was the answer. Her name is so long, said Joe. It scarcely fits on her name tag, said Rita, pointing. I'm named after my grandmother, said Victoria. She's named after a flower. My name is Long, said Miss Twinkle. It is, said Joe. My name would scarcely fit on my name tag, said Miss Twinkle. It would, said Rita, pointing. And, said Mrs. Twinkle, I'm named after a flower, too. You are, said Victoria. Yes, said Miss Twinkle. My name is Delphinium. Delphinium Twinkle. And if my baby is a girl, I'm considering chrysanthemum as a name. It's absolutely perfect. Chrysanthemum could scarcely believe her ears. She blushed. She beamed. She bloomed. Chrysanthemum, chrysanthemum, chrysanthemum. Joe, Rita, and Victoria looked at chrysanthemum longingly. Call me Marigold, said Joe. I'm Carnation, said Rita, pointing. My name is Lily of the Valley, said Victoria. Chrysanthemum did not think her name was absolutely perfect. She knew it. Chrysanthemum by Kevin Hanks. So hopefully you can see how Mrs. Twinkle was able to resolve a conflict between the two, between the students, Chrysanthemum and the other ones that were making fun of her and teasing her. She was able to resolve that conflict. That's showing respect.